If we turn our back on Israel, we can no longer expect the hand of God, the prosperity, the favor, and the blessing of God to be on our nation. Welcome to Global Perspectives. This week, it's my absolute pleasure to be bringing to you Pastor Mario Bromnik. Pastor Bromnik is the senior pastor of New Wine Ministry, as well as the founder and president of the Latino Coalition for Israel, which aims to become the largest pro-Israel Latino organization in the United States. Pastor Bromnik was also part of a key delegation of evangelical leaders who traveled to the Middle East and met with President el-Sisi of Egypt, King Abdullah of Jordan, and Prime Minister Barzani of Kurdistan, And in 2021, Pastor Romnick made our own JNS list of top 40 pro-Israel Latin American advocates. Pastor Mario Bromnick, it's really such a pleasure to have you with us. Thank you for joining me on Global Perspectives. Thank you so much. It's an honor for us to be with you. Pastor Bromnick, you are president of the Latino Coalition for Israel. And my first question is, why should Latinos in the United States support Israel? Well, we we feel everyone should support Israel, and um, there's many different uh, Christian evangelical groups. There's uh, Christians United for Israel and other groups. Uh, APAC has outreach to the Christian community, but really we didn't see so much uh, focus on the Hispanic world in the United States and Latin America, specifically uh, working with that demographic in support of Israel. So we felt that that was very important to do what CUFI, APEX, um, Hispanic Outreach, for example, does, and just exclusively uh, focus on uh, education, mobilization, um, different types of things uh, for the Hispanic evangelical world in support of Israel. Since you launched Latino Coalition, how has your experience been? Um, It's been very, very good. There's been just incredible support across the board, you know, most of which was pre-existing where people, um, the Christians, at least in the United States and many other Latin American nations understand the importance of Israel and uh, we'd like to 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 just take that um, heart and and move it forward in terms of um, you know uh, pro-Israel activism, education, bridge building with the Jewish community with with Israel. So it, it's been very very uh, fruitful and positive. Pastor Bromnick, you and I know each other from my time at the State Department, um, and there was so much that you accomplished in the Trump administration. I want to get to that. We also went to Guatemala together at your at the Latino Coalition invitation, where we met with uh, the president, the senior leadership over there. You clearly have a love, if I may say that word, for Israel and the Jewish people. How prevalent do you think that is in the in the Latino population in the United States, which we all know is the fastest growing population in the country? Yes, um, the I, I I don't I can't quantify it, um, but there is a very strong pro-Israel movement within the Hispanic evangelical world. Now, that's not to say that it's prevalent across the board, just the same as with the uh, non-Hispanic world. Um, There are sectors, and that was one of our concerns when we first started, um, within the Hispanic um, um, Christian community, um, where they're not clear on uh, the Israel mandate. Um, I remember... um, There were certain uh, trips where the uh, Palestinian Authority uh, was targeting Hispanic pastors to come in to hear their narrative in Israel. And they would utilize things like the, uh, you know, uh, poor Palestinians or or the wall issue, you know, in, in Israel and try to equate that to the plight of the Hispanic and just saying that the Palestinians are like the Hispanics uh, you know, immigrants here as a second class citizen, et cetera, et cetera. And that, that was taking off to some degree. And so there's going to be sectors and we cannot, uh, um, 
uh, probably the same with the, the Jewish world or any other demographic, say all Hispanics are pro-Israel or against Israel. It depends also what nation they come from, whether they're first or second generation Hispanics, etc. Pastor Romnick, I, I'm so glad that you're bringing up that point. I want to stay on it for just another moment. So what you're describing is um, people in Palestinian advocacy bringing uh, members of the Hispanic community to Israel. And really, I think it's another aspect of intersectionality where they're trying to um, bring race issues that exist in the United States and uh, kind of su superimpose that on Israel and, and make this libelous accusation that Israel is a racist country. Um, so, and this is something that uh, Palestinian activists do with the African American community all the time. What do you think is necessary in order to counter that narrative with the Hispanic world? Well, one thing, um, actually, uh, we felt early on when we started the Hispanic um, coalition, Latino Coalition for Israel, um, that there's there are equity issues. So I, I felt that the Lord said, said, you know, God loves Ishmael and God loves Isaac. They're both uh, uh, sons of Abraham. So in I, I felt God tell us in order to bless Isaac, we need to bless Ishmael. So in um, both um, our work with uh, Latinos in the United States and even in our work with uh, presidents of nations, this equity issue is important. So yes, God loves uh, the Palestinians. Um, God has a plan for Ishmael and God has a plan for Isaac. And if you look at the biblical model, um, the, the contours of the land of Israel united Jerusalem, Judea, and Samaria are all part of God's plan for, for Isaac, not for Ishmael. So one does not negate the other. And through our ministry, we have um, joined groups that have literally helped the plight of the Syrian Muslims in southern Syria with medical supplies and, and clinics. Um, we also work with Heather Johnson, who has an amazing uh, uh, work in uh, helping the Palestinian people outside of the Palestinian politics. We care about the Palestinian people. I know Israel does. So many times in speaking to either uh, Hispanic pastors or leaders that don't quite understand and we've heard all this pro-Israel stuff and you know what about the poor Palestinians we talk about our plight and our work in conjunction um, with Heather Johnson's group on helping Palestinians with joint Palestinian Israeli uh, initiatives I know that was uh, part of the prosperity for peace uh, understanding that um, if we can give opportunity to the people outside of the politics, then we're helping that group. And um, once people see, oh, we're, we're being equitable, which we are in our hearts, and I know even in Israel's working, it kind of changes and allows us to be very conservative pro-Israel in terms of land and other policy. Well, well, I think that's a that's a wonderful um, way to describe it. And so that, that brings me to your role um, in the Trump administration. Um, I know that you were active in the 2016 campaign and the 2020 campaign. You were um, on President Trump's Faith Council. Could you tell us a little bit more about your experience and the highlights? Because I think our audience would love to know how that felt, the highlights um, uh, of the administration in different times where you were you know, very actively involved. And I think um, what also would be interesting to hear, Pastor Bromnick, is um, what your takeaways are of all that experience. Sure. I uh, served on the National Hispanic Advisory Council for the 2016 Trump campaign, as well as the advisory part of the advisory board of Latinos for Trump. I had the honor of working with David Friedman and Jason Greenblatt. Um, on the Israel policy and the Republican Party platform and some policy issues for Israel uh, for the 2016 um, campaign. Um, we also obviously did different things throughout the initiative. We were part of the White House Faith Initiative and Opportunity. We were uh, had the honor of being with the president, with the vice president um, at the White House uh, on many, many um, occasions. Um, 
so highlights, many, many highlights, uh, uh, just having the honor uh, uh, of, of being there. Um, we honestly, and I'm sure you'll concur, have never seen in the history of our nation a more pro-Israel administration than the Trump administration, by far. I concur. I fully concur with that. And we, from a biblical standpoint, uh, one of our dear friends, Lance Wall now, um, was one of the first. If you remember, there were like 15 candidates. I uh, first uh, was an advisor to uh, Ted Cruz. And um, I was an advisor to, to Ted Cruz's campaign when I first met um, candidate Trump at uh, Trump Towers. And I personally didn't see this, but uh, Lance Wall now and others did see that God had ordained President Trump as a modern day president. Isaiah 45 talks about the Persian king, King Cyrus. And King Cyrus was the one after 70 year uh, Babylonian captivity that issued the decree to the children of Israel in the Bible to go back to Israel and rebuild the temple. It was a heathen king. It was, uh, God said, Cyrus, who I have anointed Cyrus, who does not know me. And little by little, we saw even the prime minister, uh, uh, I think, mentioned um, that uh, President Trump was, in fact, a modern day Cyrus on the 70th year anniversary of the establishment of the nation of Israel. Behold, um, we were talking about Jerusalem and um, under President Trump and Ambassador David Friedman, uh, uh, Jared Kushner, the historic movement of the embassy um, to Jerusalem and the declaration of Jerusalem as the uh, eternal capital of the nation of Israel. We were at the Oval Office um, to thank the president with our evangelical team for the movement of the embassy. And um, over and over, we would see literally the hand of God move over the president to do really historic prophetic things in our day. There's actually no other uh, uh, observation or answer as to uh, what we experienced. And many, he told us, he pointed to the two phones on his desk and he said, I got so many calls for so many heads of state about Armageddon, World War III. This was the worst thing. It was one of the quietest days in Jerusalem. And um, you're talking really, about when, when, when President Trump when was President making Trump the hands. decision to, to move the embassy, the U.S. Embassy yeah. to Jerusalem. Exactly right. And, uh, and so, Pastor Bromnick, um, I, I, would, I would share your sentiment that the Trump administration had uh, an extraordinary relationship with the faith communities, faith-based communities. Um, what, what would you like to see in terms of U.S. policy and working in partnership with faith-based communities today and moving forward? Well, um, obviously, um, the faith-based community in general um, is concerned about biblical values. Why is Israel such a, a major issue? Um, I, in, when I first met uh, Jason Greenblatt and David Friedman, um, during the campaign, I discussed with them when they were first appointed that Israel for the evangelical community is number three or number four in terms of its priority when it votes. Um, pro-life, pro-marriage, religious liberty, or Israel, number three or four. Um, because of the clear mandate in Scripture, uh, God says, I will bless those who bless Israel, I will curse those who curse Israel, and we take God's word literally. Um, so based on that, that's why there's such a strong uh, support. And it, it's not that, I, I don't believe the the evangelical community wants to be partisan in any way and we we would hope that these principles our nation was established on judeo-christian principles even though people are trying to rewrite history there's no question as to the foundation of america and um we are at a very very serious crossroads because on any of these issues, if we turn our back on the Judeo-Christian foundation of our nation, and if we turn our back on Israel, we can no longer expect the hand of God, the prosperity, the favor, and the blessing of God to be on our nation. And we're at this very critical juncture on all of these issues. Uh, so for us, it really isn't Republican, Democrat. It's not 
uh, uh, red or blue. It, it, it's, it's what our nation was founded on. And we have so uh, steered away from that that it's very troubling. Well, I think that um, there, there are m the vast majority of the Jewish community would agree with you that uh, we certainly hope that support for Israel and fighting anti-Semitism are two issues that uh, should be bipartisan and we hope that will always remain bipartisan. Um, Pastor Bromnik, I want to now talk a little bit about your uh, incredible work in Latin America. I was, you know, so grateful to you for inviting me to um, Guatemala. Um, but there's so much work that you do every day in that region. Can you tell us a little bit about your efforts going forward? After President Trump made that decision uh, to move the embassy, I was invited to Guatemala. It's about three and a half years ago now to meet President Morales because he made the same decision for Guatemala. It was an amazing time. Um, we went to the presidential palace. I brought some of the White House faith leaders and other board members, about 20 some odd people in our delegation, some of our Jewish advisory board to meet with President Morales to thank him for his efforts in moving the embassy. That night, um, we met with some of the pastors they explained to us that because of the geopolitical situation, President Morales was concerned, loved Israel, had a great relationship with Bibi Netanyahu, but didn't feel that he could have, he had the political capital to make that move. And when Benjamin Netanyahu was calling his dear friend, uh, Jimmy Morales, who he felt based on voting records, personal relationship, that this would be the most likely next nation to follow President Trump's uh, leadership in movement of the embassy. President Morales told his team, his uh, chief of staff that was there, uh, I think it was the Minister of Economy and the translator, our friend, you, I think you met her, uh, Pastor Helen Monterosa, um, I'm not going to be able to do this. I'm just going to tell him we're going to continue being here. And um, Bibi Morales, uh, Bibi Netanyahu calls and the phone drops seven times. After the second drop, somebody said, Pastor Helen, who was a translator, do you mind praying? There seems to be some interference with uh, solidifying the call. And she prayed and she felt God say, I'm dropping the call, Helen, so you can speak to the president. So she started saying, Mr. President, remember the promise you made God. He's, uh, Morales is a strong Christian that if you're president, that you would do whatever God tells you to do. And she, he said, yes, Helen, I remember. Then she said, uh, uh, Mr. President, do you mind taking the Bible that's on your credenza and opening to Matthew 25? Matthew 25, uh, Jesus talks about sheep and goat nations and the end days there, there would be sheep nations which are favorable to God and goat nations which, which are not. And the determining factor is how they treat the Jewish people, how the nations treat the Jewish people. She went on and on and on. At the end of her discussion, the president said, I will move the embassy. The call went through and the rest is history. It's, it's, it's night, an incredible I, story. Seven times the phone call drops and, and the, the president has this conversation. It is, it is unbelievable. So that night, I, I, I felt the Lord tell me, Mario, I'm sending you to Latin American nations to identify the Cyruses, that God was not just raising President Trump, President Trump and the Trump administration was a prototype for nations. And I'm raising the Jeremiah's, which are the prophets, like Pastor Helen, and the Daniels, which are either the prayer, the intercessors, or the church people mobilizing to see and realize the prophetic word per nation. So I felt that that night. I had pre, I don't know if I told you this part of the story, Ellie, um, we had a, a meeting preset to meet President Hernandez of Honduras. It was his inauguration. I met him for a couple minutes, uh, had a f photo with him and just told him we'd like to meet sometime, him and the First Lady. That night, I met with their uh, interior minister, who's a strong Christian. And I said to him, would President Hernandez, I know he's very close to Israel, would he be willing to move the embassy? And the, back then, the minister said he'd like to, but the economic situation, we, they have a lot of Palestinian Honduran citizens and so forth. He said, but there's a pastor that's very close to the president, Pastor Roy Santos. 
I called Pastor Roy Santos and Pastor Roy Santos begins to speak prophetically. He says, we're in the 70th year and I, Pastor Roy says, I prophesied to President Hernandez that he would be a president for two terms. And I said, President Hernandez, the reason you're in office is because of the first lady. The reason the first lady is in office is because her great, 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 great grandfather in 1947 happened to be the president of Honduras who denied the statehood of Israel. Mr. President, you're in a strategic place with your wife now to break the curse that's on Honduras and release the blessing. We have the honor of meeting with President Hernandez in the United States and in Honduras. We helped facilitate his speech at APAC um, a couple of years ago. And just a couple of months ago, Honduras also moved its embassy. So there is no question that the hand of God has been behind all of this. The hand of God is still moving. God is still in control and God um, is still working and loves Israel and moving towards his plans for Israel. Pastor Bromnick, um, I, I do think the, the stories on how uh, the president of Guatemala, Jimmy Morales, which as you mentioned, I interviewed him for Global Perspective, um, and Honduras moving their embassies to Jerusalem following the U.S. move. Um, th those are, you know, historic events and we certainly hope to see more of that from Latin America. So while we have a few minutes left, I'd like to, I'd really like to explore a bit more about what your hopes are on the, uh, the great work that you're doing in these Latin American countries. What would you like to see um, happen with these countries? Um, I've met with uh, President Bolsonaro of Brazil twice, and he did. We met with him three days before he first uh, became president uh, in his home in Rio. Mentioned that he wants to move the embassy. We are going back uh, to meet with President Bolsonaro in October and are hopeful that he will. Um, he's, I think, next year would be the end of his term. That, that We're hopeful that he will move the embassy. Um, we're also working on uh, nations um, standing very strong on this global rise of anti-Semitism. And um, we're hopeful that they would adopt anti-BDS legislation and continue in their support of Israel. Um, I had the honor of meeting with 10 heads of state in the last several years uh, on Israel. We meet with um, church leaders, key church leaders, influential leaders in Latin America and uh, also with the Jewish uh, community um, in some of these uh, nations. Well, it's, it's, um, it's tremendous uh, impact that you've already had. And uh, I know that there is so much to do. We're so thrilled that you joined us on Global Perspectives, Pastor Mario Bromnik. Thank you for joining us. And we will look forward to hearing, I know, lots of great news. Uh, about all of all of the work that you're doing to help support Israel and to help support the Jewish people. Great. Thank you so much. We also appreciate you and all the work uh, that you do and uh, our friendship uh, moving forward to do great things uh, for Israel and for America. I've been invited to speak at Pastor Bromnick's church in Florida, and I've been in rooms with Pastor Mario Bromnick and senior leaders of the Evangelical Church I felt the love towards Israel and towards the Jewish people worldwide in those rooms. I'm so glad that you're here with me and you heard directly from Pastor Mario Bromnik to understand why he and millions of Christian leaders and lay people around the world feel a strong desire to support Israel and to support the Jewish people. Thank you for joining me on Global Perspectives and join me the next time.